All right, what if Halo Infinite didn't suck? What would that even look like? Is it even possible? Let's sit down and have a chat. So, in my opinion, I think the next major upcoming updates and season release for Halo might just save it. Let's talk about what's coming in these updates here. Diving right into the good stuff, when is Forage coming? The ETA is November 8th, which is actually a delayed date, so let's hope it doesn't get delayed again, but November 8th is right after the Season 3 launch, which is slated for the 3rd of November. November 8th is also the date for the campaign co-op to be released, but we won't be seeing couch co-op, which is kind of lame, but that's okay, at least co-op is coming. All right, there's tons of other new things that I'll be touching on in this video as well. So let's finish talking about Forge first and then we can get into the rest of everything. So 343 released some intel on Halo's future, including Forge, and we're again gonna talk about Forge first. So the topics that 343 released some intel on were building, scripting and bots, and lighting and audio. Now I'm gonna be touching on the major things they talked about since there was so much info that they put out on these topics. So. If you want to get everything about it, you want like the six scoops of ice cream on your cone, you're gonna wanna go watch the videos they released. So first up is building and the major talking points that 343 came out and talked about in their video were magnetic attachments for objects. And I'm also gonna be displaying some uh, clips of their video for these examples so that it's easier to understand. Undo and redo, object scaling, Object scaling per plane. No clip when in the editing mode or the forage mode or playing as the monitor, however you wanna describe that mode of flying around as an orb. There's terrain objects that were added, different textures, colors, and material looks for all kinds of different objects. So customizable textures. The forge menu received a major overhaul as well and prefabbing was added so you wow. can create your own custom object with a bunch of other objects and then you can save it into the forage menu and use it in other worlds, which is huge. That is absolutely insane. And the last big talking point they had was that the budget in Halo Infinite Forge has afforded us the ability to place around, well, Halo 5 was 1600 and now it's 7,000 objects in a single world. That is absolutely freaking bonkers, dude. 7,000. The next thing 343 talked about was scripting and bots, which was actually really cool because the last Halo I played was Halo Reach. And if you're anything like me, and you, you probably haven't heard of Forage scripting before, so you might just want to go watch their video to get a better understanding of what it is. You don't have to though. Anyways, visual scripting has been added instead of just object scripting. Scripting is also shifted into what they call a node graph. So when you want to do scripting, you go into the node graph and you're still using the scripting brain like Halo 5. I think the node graph is super sleek and easy to use. It looks super nice. It's amazing. The Halo 5 weapon combination glitch that was originally in Halo 5, uh, you know, it was a glitch, is actually full, fully implemented. It's, it's a thing now. It, they literally just put it into the game. Like, what? that's freaking sweet. Nice. So basically, uh, you know, there's gonna be a little clip here playing and you're gonna see that uh, the assault rifle is now a rocket launcher. Anyways, uh, with some advanced scripting skills, you can now create completely custom game modes. And then after you completely customize a whole game mode, you can test your scripting with bots, bro, with bots, just like, in the Academy, the Halo Infinite, like multiplayer Academy, like bots, like freaking Call of Duty bots in Forage on your map. That's freaking dope. And speaking of bots, there's a completely new system called NavMesh, which tells the bots in your Forage world where they can or can't move. This, this system auto magically determines where the bots can and can't go and where they can jump to and from based on your map. It just does it automatically. But the awesome thing about it is that you can also customize the nav bot system for yourself. You can add or remove places for the bots to recognize that they can go and can't go and just 
Forge is going to be amazing. You guys are going to love it, I swear. All right, I want to first off, thank you for sticking around in the video for this long. And if you're still here and you found some value in the video, please go ahead and just click that subscribe button so I can make more like these. Anyways, moving on. Last topic here, they were talking about lighting and audio. The entire lighting system has been overhauled for Halo Infinite, not just like, you know, little fancy doodad here and there. No, the whole system has been renovated. Like, you know, they just tore down that house, built a new one, completely redone. Uh, and it's not just in Forage, right? Like that's across all of Halo Infinite. And they're using an, an entirely different lighting mechanic behind the scenes. So in Forage, in relation to lighting and audio, you can literally adjust the sun, the freaking sun. Like what the fuck? Like you can change the time of day, you can change the color of the sun, you can change the color of the sky, you can add volumetric fog. Oh God, there's just so much. There's all different kinds of lights. You can have a pitch black map and it doesn't outline your character anymore. There's like new shadow mechanics that they had to do to get into doing that. It just looks beautiful. All the VFX are color adjustable. Lighting probes have been added. So there's like these little orbs that you can place, like you can turn on a setting and it activates these orbs across the entire map. So you can determine, I think it's called sky orbs. So it determines, you know, how light is reflected off of other objects and how it's acting in a certain area. So you can completely manipulate that. Oh my goodness, holy cow. There is so much going on in the lighting world for Halo Infinite specifically Forge. So now there was a lot of lighting stuff going on. Now there's a little bit of audio. There's not a ton that was done with audio, but there are tons of options to completely change the audio in a map. You can turn it off completely. You can have a primary audio and you can have a secondary audio. So say, you know, you want to sound like it's in outer space, but it's raining. I think you could, you might be able to do that. Who knows? There's so many options for that. Now there's also things like reverb, audio effects and audio scripts as well. Sheesh, man. All right, I'm telling y'all, this is going to be huge. Halo Infinite Forge is going to be absolutely mind blowing. But all right, don't go anywhere because I've got more leaked info for y'all about the upcoming updates or update, I should say. And if you're still here, I want to say thanks again for sticking around for dang near 10 minutes of the video. And I want you to know how I, I, I truly am appreciative that you've stuck around this long because it shows that you really enjoy my content and that you're truly a fan of what I do. So again, thank you. All right, last couple things about Forage and then we'll talk more about maps, guns, equipment, vehicles, and game modes coming on, all right? There is so much coming, I'm so freaking excited. All right, but before we get into all that, I do wanna say when Forage comes out, it will be an open beta, but ideally, you won't have to do anything to play. You just download the update like normal and you play Forge mode. But how the beta is going to be released hasn't really been spoken on yet, so we'll have to wait and see to know for sure. The full release of Forge shouldn't be expected until at least season three. But since, you know, 343 is like trying to make Halo Infinite the best, the best Halo yet, pff, whatever, you know, like we might see it in beta for a couple seasons, but we'll see, I suppose. All right, moving on to the other update stuff. All of the following info is all stuff I found leaks of, as well as a direct tweet from Tashi himself. So first, let me just read the tweet thread real quick for you. All right, so it starts out with Jack Courage Dunlop tweeting, I'm sitting here sad thinking about Halo Infinite. The gameplay was really fun, but man, it just had nothing. Nothing. It hurts to say now, and I'm sorry if that offends anyone, but seriously, my favorite game series of all time was just so poorly handled. Good night. You can see that Courage is pretty upset about that. And Tashi replies, stay tuned, big stuff on the way. And then Jack is like, I'm sorry to even tweet these things, man. I know how hard people work. Just some decision and approach from the top just needs to be looked at as near 20 year Halo, excuse me, as near 20 year fan of Halo, my heart just hurts, he says. I think about it so much and I can agree with him a lot there. Tashi responds again and he says, yeah, I get you. And believe me, this whole studio wants more too. I'm super bullish on this game and franchise. I think Forge is going to change the game forever. More maps, modes, weapons, equipment, all coming. We're sharing more real soon. Lots to be excited for, we gotta deliver. 
And that's not even the end of it. There's more that goes on here. Uh, but that is absolutely huge. You, Tashi literally says there's more maps, modes, weapons, and equipment coming. So let's talk a little bit about that. So after reading that tweet, I found some more info, which honestly, it really surprisingly didn't take a whole lot of digging. So a new weapon is possibly gonna be added called the Bandit Rifle, which is a lot like the DMR from Halo Reach and is a potential item that we may see in this coming update. The two, the equipment items that Tashi was talking about, there's two of them. One's a translocator, also known as a teleporter. And the other one is a shroud screen grenade, which, you know, you guessed it, shroud screen is, is like a smoke grenade, but it is in the shape of a plasma dome instead. Kind of an interesting sci-fi halo, uh, you know, little touch of class there. I don't even know what to call that. Anyways, on top of all that, there is a potential for the Falcon or Falcon. I'm from the Midwest, so I pronounce Falcon weird uh, to make a comeback from Reach. So uh, yeah, that would be freaking amazing. That was like my favorite vehicle in Halo Reach. Anyways, some additional battle pass items and there's just ton, tons more to come. There's all kinds of stuff coming in this next update and that's why I'm so freaking excited. All right, 343 seems to be working pretty dang hard as of late, which is good because it really didn't seem like that's what they were doing from the jump. So hopefully this next update is freaking amazing. I hope you guys are just as, just as excited as I am. I can't even freaking talk right now. That's how excited I am. But if you liked all this video, if you liked, oh my goodness, you see, I'm so excited. Anyways, you know what? Just freaking peace out, everybody.